Welcome to this walkthrough of the Solar Park Financial Model from eFinancialmodels.com. I would like to walk you through and show you the structure of this model and also what you can do with this financial model uh, template. The way this model is structured, you have here different uh, worksheets. One worksheet is the executive summary, which basically summarizes the outputs of, the, um, of your financial projections but also at the same time contains the key assumptions which are needed to derive the financial projections. And below also summarizes the, uh, <coughs> the project IRR, equity IRR of the, of the solar park based on, on, your, on, your, on the detailed calculations of this model. This is quite a simple way to to, to summarize it, but you also need here this worksheet which contains the detailed um, calculations. You have here one section which figures out the production capacity and the electricity produced. Uh, you project the <coughs> inflation on the side of the electricity price, but also on the cost side. Uh, in terms of pricing, the model assumes that you sell uh, the electricity produce A at the market price and B at the premium. So these are two factors which are added so effectively you are selling here at 15.5 cents the kilowatt <coughs> hour. In terms of the <coughs> certificate, because it's, um, it's a green energy, it's solar energy, there are <coughs> sometimes some um, um, arrangements where basically this um, the premium of the certificate stays constant or it can also be that the certificate price uh, changes over time. With this model you can easily um, basically um, um, sim simulate and, and, um, and, and forecast the, the different uh, scenarios. You have here another section for the, uh, the costs. These are done on a megawatt or US dollar per megawatt basis. And then depending what you assume here, how many megawatts have installed, it gives you the, uh, the estimated variable uh, costs. Uh, these assumptions are then all needed to, uh, to build the income statement so that you can figure out especially EBITDA and, your, uh, <coughs> and the profits, yearly profits of this, uh, of this project. The model also has a section uh, which gives you a proper balance sheet and a cash flow statement. On the cash flow statement, <coughs> you have um, the operating cash flows, you have the investments included, and you also have the financing part uh, <coughs> in included. Um, another section is the free cash flow uh, calculation, which you need to calculate the uh, project IRR. This is based on the free cash flow to the firm. Here it goes over a period of up to up to 30 years and then it applies the IRR formula. You also have here a uh, <coughs> net present value model. Here <coughs> you can enter the discount rate and figure out what's the net present value of your, of your project. Another section here is the levered equity IRR. If you use debt financing, how much does the IRR change from the project? If you use leverage, uh, you see the effect can be significant. Therefore, it's important to differentiate uh, the two IRRs. Um, another section here is a, you have here a debt schedule with two layers of debt, term loan A, term loan B. You have a section for the key financial ratios of the project and a fixed asset uh, schedule. Okay, so now what can you do with this financial model? Uh, for instance, you have a different park. You have a park of 18,000 <coughs> megawatts. So you can simply input um, the uh, installed capacity. You can say how much is the investment cost per um, or kilowatt um, kilowatt peak and how long do you expect this project to last it goes up to 30 years but you can also change it for instance only to 25 uh, years and then you can uh, <coughs> basically see what does this mean and how does the IRR changes if you change some of the variables here if you change for instance you take one year more you say you see has not much effect on the IRR <coughs> 
but if you for instance if you go 30 you see it's it's changing here it's changing here a bit but what's more important here is the install capacity if i change that you will see it has a bigger effect on the on the iro uh, you can also <coughs> um, basically what you can do is to play around with these assumptions and see how it how it affects your um, your, your your project metrics what you also can do is is to uh, figuring out your financing structure at the moment you have here um, um, quite generous adept service coverage ratios this would mean you eventually could use some more debt financing so what happens if I now go to a bit more depth I'll take a bit more depth on the junior loan and you can basically see <coughs> um, if I change from 15 to 20 I can increase the profitability of the project um, a bit but also at the same time, if you uh, negotiate with the with the land lease ho holder, for instance, <coughs> you have um, you have, you pay a different uh, land lease. You see that the model allows you to figure out how much <coughs> you can pay in order that your project is still um, <coughs> is still profitable. So if I go now here to thirty-five thousand per megawatt. I can now see I pay <coughs> the landowner here basically uh, 700k a year and this basically with this all other assumptions being constant uh, it, it basically gives me uh, gives me this um, this output um, another um, nice feature here is the dividend policy there are two uh, models one is a cash sweep and the other is a percentage of net income if I model this as percentage of net income, it means that every year 20% of the net income are distributed as, um, as dividends. Uh, let me show you that here. So this is 20% of net income. However, the effect of that is that now in the solar power company, the cash is, is kept and, and it builds up over time. So there's a lot of cash at the end in the company in order to uh, <coughs> uh, as there is no um, <laughs> normally no need for the for the cash or there shouldn't be a big need for cash this cash could should go to um, to the investors you can simply now um, change the dividend model and put a um, cash sweep mechanism in place this means the maximum um, amount of Dividends is the being distributed so that the cash at the end is um, is zero on the company's um, on the company's balance sheet. So these are some features to to play around, and it should basically make it easier uh, for you to um, to figure out how much uh, is the IRR on your solar park and what's the financial feasibility of your solar solar park. So I hope this walkthrough was uh, useful. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and visit our website efinancialmodels.com. Thank you for watching.